السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ آئی ایم اسٹارٹنگ دس سیریز بیسڈ آن مائی لیکچرس وچ آئی ڈلیور ڈیورنگ مائی ٹیچنگ کیریئر بگننگ ود دا کوشچن وچ واز ریز بائی دا اسٹوڈنٹس آف ایم فل اینڈ پی ایچ ڈی اینڈ آئی فائنڈ اٹ ویری مچ ریلیونٹ فار ناٹ اونلی دا اسٹوڈنٹس بٹ آلسو فار دوز ہو ہیو ایمبیگیٹی ٹوورڈز اٹ اینڈ آئی فیل ڈیم نیسیسری ٹو ایڈریس دس کوشچن question is allah in some parts of the quran states that the origin of human being is water and in another part of the quran that it's clear it seems like a contradiction please clarify the confusion on this issue the confusion or contradiction is verily not in the quran but in the limitation of our knowledge and understanding we need to develop a better sense of understanding before our quest for answers Surely the answers are there but first the right questions need to be asked and as we know asking the right questions requires a certain level of knowledge itself The Quran is a book of signs and not a book of signs this means that Allah as our creator is informing us of our existence therefore we do not need signs to prove the Quran but rather the Quran to verify the signs Science is defined as hypothesis theories which are tested in methodical manner until the same results are achieved using controlled or reviewable variables. On the other hand, the Noble Quran is an encyclopedia of facts and divine guidance. This makes the glorious Quran a living miracle that has stood the best of time and the advancement of knowledge and technology. The Quran is very sophisticated and thorough in addressing the narration of the story of life at various levels of understanding. It possesses many layers of knowledge in its sentences, which can be extracted as society and science become sophisticated enough to decipher it, comprehend its science and appreciate the majesty and wisdom of its author. This makes the Quran universal and applicable at all times. confirming it as the only eternal book authored by the designer and creator of the universe and all that's in it all that surrounds it and all that's beyond it now let's see surah 86 that is at tarik verse number 5 here i'm going to uh, read the translation now let man but think from what he is created in this surah and aya alerting man to the weakness of his origin from which he was created the intent of it is to guide man to accept the reality of the hereafter because whoever is able to begin the creation then he lord almighty is also able to repeat it in on the same way when allah states in the quran that he had created all living things from water this refers to the following all living things originates from water molecules and microbes this is the simple beginning of all living organism from the vegetation to animals water is building block of life without which life is not possible all living organisms are built from bricks of cells science now confirms that 80% of cell is made up of water and the other 20% is made up of carbon and water According to our knowledge and scientific advancement of today life in the animal kingdom begins with a sexual activity between mates this sexual activity is to aid the transfusion of liquid male sperm and female egg again we see that life begins from a drop of water finally the clay that is mentioned in the quran refers to matter we know as carbon which is the fabric of cells that make up the physical body the cells are likely bricks that make up buildings the bricks can be used to build a mud house or a palace for a king as such cells form the smallest living organism to the largest living creature we know putting science aside if we were to ask the most primitive of our society to put together a substance of clay you would find that they would gather soil they would then mix it with the water to create a sticky and adhesive like material that would be used to mold and shape hence what they used is water to keep each and every grain of soils together 
This illustrates the scientific findings that carbon, clay and water are the basic component of life. The Quran describes how Allah created Adam. Surah 15 Al-Hajr Al -Hajr means stone land, rocky city. Verse 26 mentioned, we create man from sounding clay, from mud molded into shape. Then there is another surah, surah 32, a sajda, the prostration, worship, adoration. There are two verses, 7 and 8. He who has made everything which he has created most good, he began the creation of man with nothing more than clay and made his progeny from acquaintances of the nature of a fluid despised. The notion of getting something out of something else does not give rise to any doubts. The phrase can equally mean that every living thing was made of water as its essential component or that every living thing originated in water. Life is in fact of aquatic origin and water is the living component of all living cells. Without water, life is not possible. When the possibility of life of another planet is discussed, the first question is, is there a sufficient quantity of water to support life? So it's clear that Allah is stating beyond any confusion and contradiction that Adam is created from sounding clay, mud molded into shape and his progeny from essence of liquid. Surah 21 al anbiya the Prophets verse number 30 also states that how man has been created from clay and water. The word translated here as water is in fact ma, which means both water in the sky and water in the sea or any kind of liquid. In the first meaning, water is element necessary to all vegetable life. The word in the Arabic text for clay is teen, which means earth mixed with a quantity of water which becomes adhesive. According to the Quran, therefore, human life originated in a substance which was a mixture of earth and water, which in the course of time developed into man. In the foregoing verses, we are told that an early stage in the evolution of man was when he was giving a particular form from wet earth. Surah 32 as Sajda, the prostration, worship, adoration. Verse number 9. But he fashioned him in due proportion and breath into him something of his spirit and he gave you the faculties of hearing and sight and feeling and understanding little thanks do ye give again in surah 77 al mursalat the emissaries wind sent forth verse number 22 for a period of growth determined according to need these verses indicate very clearly that man's origin in dry earth or rock was one stage from which step by step he passed through a stage when it was mixed with water causing the development of a rudimentary form of life which later on began to procreate through the functioning of the sex organs which had developed in the male and female. All these stages represent different periods of time the duration of which can at best be only vaguely conjectured or imagined. With this, I would like to conclude today's session. Inshallah, soon we will have another session based on your questions regarding the Quranic vision. Fi Amanullah.